Parenting Junkie. Hi guys and welcome back to The Parenting Junkie, the place to go to love parenting and for parenting from love. Today I want to talk about safety and danger and the balance between them as we navigate these parenting waters. Living in the US today, I sometimes feel as though culturally we have a competition between us who is most anxious over dangers in the world, who is most worried, who is most protective when it comes to taking risks and, um, and anything that we perceive as dangerous. When you walk around the playgrounds, it is a cliche, but it's true that you have parents hovering over kids shouting, be careful, be careful, be careful, and helping children with every little step up the ladder to the slide, etc., etc. The fact is that kids need to take risks in order to learn the limitations of their bodies and of the world. They need to be able to stumble and fall and do things that are perceived as dangerous and scary to their parents. If we weren't to let them do that, they would never learn to crawl, to roll over, to walk. No baby has ever learned to walk without falling down. So um, the same is true for any, uh, any learning curve. It includes stumbling, falling, risk-taking. It includes something that you, is just out of your comfort zone that you just can't do, and that is just too hard, or is just slightly too dangerous for your skill level in order to master the next, uh, the next level. We seem to be addicted to anxiety as parents, to be worrying the whole time about paedophilia, about using knives, about going out alone, about playing in the yard, about diseases, about getting a cold, about falling behind academically. Worry seems to be, uh, you know, at every single corner. I'm not one who sees the past as this nostalgic, wonderful era and who dislikes the day and age that we live in. I think there's so many wonderful things about living today and the past wasn't that rosy. But one thing we can say about the previous generation growing up and even our own selves when we were growing up, kids had so much more freedom and so much more alone time away from adult protection. Um, you know, kids were sent out to play on the street with a gang of other kids and told to come home when the street lights come on. And that meant that they had long stretches of time um, to take risks and to be on their own and to navigate the world free range. If you follow the Free Range Kids movement, led by Lenore Skenazi, and I strongly recommend that you do, um, and if you read her wonderful book, you'll learn that anxiety is something that isn't necessarily founded in truth. There isn't more paedophilia or more dangers for kids today. It's not more dangerous for them to be out playing in the street. We simply treat these things differently. If you look at the evolution of holidays, such as how Halloween is treated or how going out alone is treated, we can see that anxiety has just peaked with our day and age, but the dangers have not. It's a truly tragic loss that kids can no longer go out by themselves in so many neighborhoods and that the ages of independence are so so much later and later. We don't want our children growing up thinking that the world is a dangerous place and further thinking that even the dangers that do exist are too much for them to navigate and handle skillfully. If they feel like they need constant protection, they might be timid and anxious all the time. In fact, for most of us, real dangers are very few and far between if we're really honest about the statistics. Living in a worst case scenario all the time is called catastrophic thinking. And that means always imagining the worst. And it's a pretty miserable way to live. The fact is that when you're small, you get to make small mistakes and the repercussions aren't that big. So it's really important to be able to practice making mistakes and taking risks as you grow up because those mistakes and those risks get bigger and have bigger repercussions later on. So if you don't allow your child to take any risks and to take ownership of their own um, freedom in that sense, um, slowly but surely as they grow up, and all of a sudden when they hit 18, they're supposed to be an adult and they're supposed to be able to you know, make their own decisions and take their own risks. Well, the risks that one might take at 18 are far more serious than the risks one might take at three or four. So rather than piling all the independence on them all at once, how about we build it up in a way that's appropriate to their maturity level? Practicing good judgment and making small mistakes when you're small can save you from making big mistakes when you're big. Having someone hover over you and protect you all the time or shout be careful at every step sends the message that you can't be trusted. And when that message is internalized, that creates a frightened and an anxious kid. 
Don't forget that anxiety is contagious and our kids look to us to read whether a situation is or is not dangerous. And if we're constantly sending out these false alarms that there's danger everywhere and that they need to be careful of everything and everyone, then they're going to internalize that message and live with that same anxiety about the world. Rather, we want to cultivate a message of trust, a message of skill, a message of building good judgment and making good choices. So how do we cultivate more trust and a child who is trustworthy? Well, we begin by giving them trust and putting the risk taking in their hands. Allow your children to do for themselves the things that they are interested in. So say they are interested in cooking, but you feel it's dangerous. That's something that you're going to need to work through with yourself and figure out a way of allowing them to cook in a pleasant environment using things like knives and fire in a way that is safe and appropriate for their skill and maturity level. But you must let them stretch their capabilities and take some risks. Remember, you cannot learn to walk without falling. Failure is our most important teacher. So where the failure isn't too great, where the failure isn't too risky, allow them to take the full risk and fail if necessary. If there's any way for you to create a safe environment that your kids can be let out of your sight, let them. It's so important for kids to be allowed and trusted to have alone time when they want it. Try developing mantras that encourage trust instead of constantly saying be careful. Things like I trust you or I see that you know how to stay safe. Or my personal favorite is when my kid asks me if he's allowed to climb on something or jump off something, I ask him, do you feel safe doing that? Sometimes he'll say, no, I don't think that's safe. And I feel like that's developing his judgment about what is and isn't safe. And sometimes he'll think, yes, I can do that. And he'll take that risk. And I think that that's probably a healthy way for him to develop a sense of trust in his own body and in his own limits. Instead of saying things like, be careful, how about giving them useful information? If you're trying to climb a really difficult mountain or something, and someone just keeps shouting, be careful, be careful, it inhibits and it creates anxiety, but it doesn't actually help you be more careful. So instead, you might want to give them information that you think they may not have. For example, that floor looks slippery, it might be wet, or that wall is very high, you know, and just mention things that might make their judgment more easy. If looking at your child climb a ladder or a tree is too difficult for you, if you constantly think that they're gonna fall and you're inhibiting them and creating anxiety, then look away if necessary. <laughs> of course, I'm not saying you shouldn't trust your intuition and if you think something truly isn't safe, of course you must set a limit on that and your job is to keep your children safe. But don't forget that they need to push those limits so that they can take on more and more of, in, of their role in, dis, in making those decisions, in being independent. So that's why I say look away if necessary. If you think this is probably safe and within his realm, but it's making me edgy, I'm just going to look at my phone or look over here while he does that to give him the space to try it out without your anxiety infringing upon his experience. What we need to realize as parents is that sometimes we believe that worrying is our job, that worrying is a good use of our time, that somehow worrying is doing something when we can't do anything. Often our children are gonna do things that we can't do anything about, just like a baby learning to walk. Um, and we have to develop a trust rather than a worry. If you can realize that worrying is just contagious and unpleasant and creates miserable, environment for all of you and instead use that capacity, use that energy for developing trust, for developing mindfulness about it, uh, then you're setting on your way uh, to a, a safer environment in fact. Because a child who has that internalized voice of I am trustworthy, I can make good decisions, I can decide what's safe, I'm good at this, um, I'm responsible, they're going to internalize that message and live up to those expectations. A child who has a mother who's constantly saying be careful and worrying and you'll fall and you'll hurt yourself and you'll cut yourself and you'll burn yourself and you'll, you'll, you'll somehow go wrong is going to internalize that message and I think that they're probably likely to be more clumsy, have more accidents because they don't have that empowerment of mum trust me I can do this. 
If you want to learn more about the safety of danger and the danger of safety, I really recommend reading Free to Learn by Dr. Peter Gray. I recommend him all the time, but it really shows how children in most societies throughout most of history were free, were free to take risks and to be alone and to develop those skills independent of adult anxieties. Another great read on this is Playborhood which is about cultivating the opportunities for play outside of the watchful eyes of parents. And the third, which I recommended before, is Free Range Kids. And I think that this is just such an important read for all parents, especially parents in the US. For further reading on this, check out Beware Dangerism by Geva Tully. Um, which is all about how our society has created these anxieties and kids are no longer allowed to climb on the monkey bars or slide down the fireman pole to fear of danger, where statistically there are actually no more dangers than when you and I were growing up. Do you give your kids the freedom to take risks and to play with dangerous things by themselves? If so, I'd love to hear about it. Um, please head on over to theparentingjunkie.com and leave a comment now because I want to hear your experience and your advice on risk taking and on danger versus safety with our kids and how to find the balance between them. Keep on loving parenting and parenting from love because your kids need you almost as much as you need them. Bye!